We have Dr. Peter Irungo from Shine Dental Clinic in studio with us this morning. Karibu sana. Uh, thank you very much. It is great to have you here. And uh, kindly, maybe I've not given you all the introductions that you need. <laughs> and this is your camera. All uh, right. To Uze Sera. <laughs> thank you, Mikali. Uh, good morning, all viewers. I'm Dr. Peter Irungo. I'm a dental surgeon. Uh, we operate our dental clinic, uh, Shine Dental Clinic, which is along the busy Jogo Road at Jogo Road Plaza. That is at Mazua stage. Our social media handles are uh, Shine Dental Clinic on other platforms or at Dr. Irongo Peter. Okay. Yes. Okay, great. So today we're just talking about how to improve mm. your smile. Yes. And there's so many reasons why people do not smile as they should or feel like they can't yeah. because of probably the situation in with their mouth. teeth, in their mouth, and all of that. And today we're just going to get into that. Okay. And I feel like I, I need to start with this, the aesthetics beat of it, mm -hmm. where we've seen people who have uh, gone through surgery to just make sure they fix a few things here and there. Yeah. At what point is this really necessary? Or do we have other measures that we can take to just, you know, take care of that without going the aesthetics way? Uh, okay, I think to start with, we are, we are created in a very beautiful way. That is true. Uh, by God. And uh, God made sure that our teeth are part of the beauty. And that is why anyone who's lost a tooth actually knows what it means to lose a tooth. Yes. So I'm always advocating to all viewers, to all Kenyans, please let's avoid losing any tooth. Because it reaches a point people get so used to losing teeth, they're like, it's always a solution to any problem. Mm -hmm. But after you lose the mm -hmm. tooth, that's when you realize, oops, something has changed. Yeah. I don't look the way I used to look. I can't chew the way I used to chew. So people should start putting some more emphasis on their teeth and conserving them and saving them before you get any problem. When you get a problem, let's visit a professional who will try to fight and conserve your tooth rather than rushing to someone who is just telling you, this one should go, this one should be out. Because as I've said, until you lose one, that's when you realize it was important. Mm. So let's always strive to do that. Um, uh, first, let's always try to keep our teeth and our mouth clean by good brushing. That is a simple and most basic thing. And unfortunately, some people take it for granted. Some people will only brush when they remember because they don't think it's so important. Okay. And that is how most of the oral diseases or uh, diseases associated with our teeth begin, by mm -hmm. failure to brush. People don't know the importance of brushing, and we might teach them today a bit. Okay, please. Uh, our mouth, or okay, let's call it our oral cavity. Yes. <laughs> that is our term, yeah? But to the common one, it's our mouth. Yes. It's made up of uh, multiple tissues. We have the teeth, we have the gums, we have the tongue, we have the cheeks, we have the lips, and all these form one house. And that house should always be kept clean, no matter which side. Is it the tongue? Is it the tooth? Is it the gum? Uh, in between, we always have some bacteria, or in our mouth, we have some normal bacteria. We call them normal flora, okay. because we cannot eliminate them, and they are not harmful. But they become harmful when we let them uh, rule our mouth. Mm -hmm. And we let them rule by failing to brush, because one way of minimizing the amount of bacteria, or the number of bacteria in our mouth, is regular brushing. Okay. Why? Because every time we brush, uh, whatever amount of bacteria was in the mouth is always scrapped off, you spit it out, and uh, you end up reducing the numbers. But unfortunately, within five minutes, we'll always have a new culture coming up. So it's always a cat and mouse game with the bacteria. So when you choose to brush or not to brush, then you're giving the bacteria an upper hand in culturing. Okay. And the more they culture, the more damage they'll cause your mouth. Why? Because too much of something we always say is poisonous. Mm. And that applies to the same bacteria in the oral cavity. Okay. Too much of them will be poisonous to our tissues. And uh, if you want to know how well you're brushing or how, how fast the, the bacteria will culture, just brush your teeth. And then after five minutes, you just try to run your tongue along your teeth. Then you'll feel, oops, something has formed, like a slimy layer. Mm -hmm. That is what we call yeah. dental plaque. Are you seeing me doing it? Everyone I'm does like it. <laughs> it's very simple. Even <laughs> when I did it within a, a few microseconds. Yeah? And you can yeah. feel something sticking on your teeth. But it doesn't mean you didn't brush. Mm -hmm. And that tells you how fast the plaque formed. Okay. Plaque is always a mixture of bacteria, saliva, and some food particles, and all that mixture. And it forms a very smooth layer that covers your teeth and it forms immediately after like five minutes. 
So the whole After day. After five minutes yes, of brushing? Yes, because the bacteria are active. You, sp oh. you, you brush them, you've done spitting, you've rinsed. Yes. But whatever is left is good enough to culture very fast. Okay. But the good thing if you keep brushing, it means that before they overrule, before they start causing damage, again you've brushed maybe in the evening. And that's why we always advise you brush, okay, after every meal, which sometimes is impossible. Yes. So we always advocate for two times. In two the morning, times a day in the morning yes. after you, you take breakfast <laughs> and before you go to bed. Before you, uh, after you take breakfast, because some people will always prefer doing it before taking breakfast. Mm -hmm. And then after breakfast, they leave all the bacteria that will be culturing with a lot of food. Because you've taken breakfast, you've given the bacteria a lot of sugar. So what do you do? You leave them well fed. So they'll culture mm -hmm. even faster than the person who brushed after breakfast. Okay. Because when you brush after, it means whatever bacteria is left in the mouth has nothing to break down. They have no food, they have no, you get, you've not taken anything now after brushing. So it will take a while before maybe you take something else, before you take a snack. And uh, you need to minimize that quantity so that before you sleep again, whatever has been cultured during the day, you also need to brush it out. Or if you forget, you end up now having a double uh, culture the whole night. And unfortunately, when you sleep, you close your mouth. Yes. And that means the bacteria will have a very warm environment. <laughs> and like during the day, when you keep swallowing, you keep biting this and that. Yes. In the process, you end up clearing most of the bacteria mm. that may be culturing. Mm. But then when you close your mouth at night, you'll close for like eight hours, six hours, five hours. The bacteria will culture even more. And you didn't brush. So you can imagine the double yes. number. Then unfortunately, you forget again tomorrow morning. Then you are in trouble. So brushing is as simple as that, and it is a main. It's a, it's our it's our it's our solution to most of the oral diseases. But most people don't do it. Mm. Most people will do it when they feel like. Most people are in a hurry to do other things, and they forget to brush their teeth. Secondly, let's not brush in a hurry. Some people just think brushing is just putting the toothbrush once, twice, thrice, and you are done. <laughs> And you forget that one, you have almost, let's say, 32 teeth for uh, a, a healthy adult. Yes. But sometimes you can have minimum, you can have like 28, you can uh -huh. have less. Mm -hmm. For those who have removed some, of course, you have less. Uh -huh. And for some people, you have some bit more. They are called supernumerary. Then some people with more than 32 teeth. Ooh, then wow. it's normal, but you may not notice. Okay. So we are talking about 32 teeth, and each tooth has more than one surface. Yes. A surface is a side that you can see. So mm. you have the front side that you can see. Mm. You have the inner side that you can s uh, you cannot see directly. Mm -hmm. And then for the molars, you have the top surface. We call it the occlusal surface, mm -hmm. the one that chews. Mm. So most people are very good at brushing the outer surface because their toothbrush runs very fast. But then they forget to tilt their brush and go to the inner surface while opening their mouth. Mm. So most people will do it very comfortably when the mouth is closed or half closed. But then they forget you're supposed to open your mouth wide and then you tilt your brush to the inner side. For the lower teeth, you do it on the lower side. For the upper teeth, you tilt it upwards mm. and you brush the inner surface. After that, you're supposed to brush the occlusal surface, the one that you chew with. Yes. And that is where most of the damage or the decay or cavities will normally start. Okay. And those are some of the basic simple things that can help you save your teeth. On top of that, of course, diet control. Mm -hmm. Because some also, some people will, will indulge in a lot of uh, we call it cardiogenic diet. That mm -hmm. is diet that contains a lot of refined sugar, mm -hmm. especially ladies, you are the victims. Yeah. Chocolates. Chocolates and mm. all those sweets and all those sweet yes. candies. And then you'll convince yourself that I'll brush in the evening. But then look at the hours we talked about. Yes. You've been imbibing some chocolate since 8 a.m. Mm. up to 8 p.m. And you'll brush at 10. And then you brush uh, in the manner we are talking about, just a quick <laughs> brush. Then yes. you'll always leave your tooth coated with a lot of sugar. And that is where most of the decay starts. The sugar will be consumed by the bacteria that we've talked about. Yes. And the bacteria will be well fed. And what they produce is an acid. An acid uh -huh. is what starts eating away your tooth. And it yes. normally starts as a small depression. And then tomorrow you take some more sugar. It goes into that depression now. And the bacteria will find somewhere to hide inside. And that's why we always talk about a cavity being an irreversible damage or those what we call, some people call them holes on their teeth. Mm -hmm. uh, we mostly we call them cavities or mm -hmm. caries. Once a cavity starts, and that is the bad thing about it, it is normally irreversible. So you can only stop it before it starts. And that stopping is by brushing and avoiding all those sweet, sweet stuff. Because as I've said, once it begins, it forms a cocoon. The bacteria will go in there. It doesn't matter whether you stop tomorrow now 
the bacteria have it's already, already in there. Yes. And they'll use whatever now you will take, not just now the not just the sweet stuff. Yeah. Anything you take, whether you brush or not, whether you use an electronic brush or not, no, not. you won't reach where they are hiding. Okay. So it's always good to prevent uh, rather than wait for it to occur. And that is why I'm giving the tips on the brushing and avoiding things. And I that. think basically brushing our teeth is the one thing that we should be doing mm. a lot. Yes. And we should start at a very, very early age to even impact this knowledge to our children. Yes. That this is how it's done. Take and your why time and yes. why you're doing it. Yes. Actually, we should teach our children as early as one year, two years. Mm, let mm, them play mm. around with their toothbrush. Mm -hmm. Let them, let them. Most of them will always swallow their toothpaste, yeah. and that is why there is a special formulation for young children yeah. because it's not harmful. So l let's not give our young children our adult toothpaste okay. because most of the times it contains a lot of fluoride. Some to most of our, uh, let's say, our locally produced toothpaste have some additional fluoride, and the additional fluoride is mostly used to repair some of the damages on our teeth, minor okay. damages. Okay. And that is why more brushing and good brushing will help you prevent the, gum, uh, the, 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 the dental cavities yes. rather than not brushing. Because the fluoride will get in into, into the cavity that is starting to form mm -hmm. and it will uh, cause what we call remineralization. So if the cavity was starting, <laughs> we are going to what? add a remineralization. Okay. So there's uh, a mineralization. Okay, okay, and okay. then the cavity came and demineralized. So uh -huh. demineralization means some damage is occurring. Mm. And when you brush well, before it goes too much, the tooth is able to reverse. That is the uh, remineralization. Okay. And that is what the fluoride does. But unfortunately, the adult toothpaste has a little bit more fluoride than the children, the pediatric one. And uh, if, you, if a child swallows a lot of that fluoride, it can cause some heart diseases in a child below like five years. So it's always good to go for the pediatric toothpaste. Maybe some parents don't know, so they just think yeah. toothpaste is toothpaste. That's a very important piece of information mm. that you just told us today. Yes, that is where we have different. Actually, if you go to the malls and supermarkets, you'll find the toothpastes are branded in age yes. zero to something, five yes. to six, six to eight. Uh -huh. Why? Because they are controlling the amount of fluoride. Why? Because they know this child is fond of swallowing most of this toothpaste. Especially the younger they are, yeah. the more they feel it sweet and the more they don't know why you should spit. And okay. that is why the youngest children should use the, the formulation for the young children. So that even if they swallow, there is no risk of any heart disease. Okay. But anything after 8, 9, 10 years, one, they'll know how to follow instructions. So when you tell them, uh, you've been showing them anyway. Yeah. So they've been seeing you spitting. So at one point they'll know you should not swallow. Yeah. So at that age now, you can start giving them the adult toothpaste because they'll just brush and spit it. Great. And that, yeah. You say that the gum, uh, the, the, the cavity is irreversible. Yes. What about gum disease? Is it irreversible? Or? Gum disease, good. That's another uh, disease that we normally see. And uh, it's a silent killer. Let me, I always call it a silent killer. Why? Because unlike a cavity, which will get to a point and you start feeling sensitivity, you'll start feeling some pain, mm -hmm. the gum disease will eat up your gum without any pain. Mm? Yes. And it, mo it mostly starts when we are young. Most okay. of the gum disease starts between around uh, 15 years of age. You'd assume that that's where the pain will be, but no. It's not even there. Actually, you are too young to even think you can be sick anywhere. You know, yeah. 15 years, you're in uh, <laughs> primary school, high mm. school. And... Uh, uh, how does it start? The same plaque, you remember, you've talked about dental plaque. Yes. It's a mixture of bacteria, saliva, food, and all that mixture that forms a layer on the surface of your tooth. Mm -hmm. Remember, we said about five minutes after brushing. Yes. So you can imagine your whole life, you're always fighting against this plaque. Mm. If you fail to maintain some good balance, then you end up forming a hard plaque. So when it forms on the tooth and you don't brush one day, two days, or you don't brush it well. So you always leave. And, and unfortunately, Mikali, yes. every time you brush, you'll only remove 90% of the plaque. No So 5% is guaranteed to be left okay. because you cannot be 100%. In between the teeth, you will never go in and brush there unless you do some flossing. Even if you do flossing, you won't remove 100% again. So you see, we're always fighting with uh, some remnants of the plaque. And this plaque, uh, once it settles on the tooth, after a while, it becomes hard. So the plaque was easy to remove with a brush because it was soft. But then after a while, after a few weeks, after a few months, it becomes like a spoon. We call it tata or calculus. It mostly starts with a white tata, which you cannot see. Actually, it mimics the color of the tooth. 
and that is the age of around 15 years or thereabout or 20 years. That time it won't cause any more any signs or anything to make you worried, and that is why we always tell uh, we always advise people to have regular dental checkups. Yes. Why? Because as we are saying, these things are silent. Like the, the gum disease will start silently. Once the white calculus or tartar forms, it will take a few more years. Well, when you brush it, it won't come off. Mm -hmm. That one is guaranteed. The plaque over it will come off, but the mm. hard tartar will never come off now. Mm -hmm. So after some months, some years, it will start turning color. It will start becoming brown, black, along the gum. And then maybe at around 20, 25 years of age, that's when you start noticing I have something black on my tooth that is not coming out. It's next to the gum. Yes. You know? Some people will try brush it hard, it's not coming out. They'll try pick something hard, like a toothpick. Uh, if you're lucky, you can break it off, but then after one, two days, it forms again. Oh. Because you broke off only a small chunk, so the rest is still there. It will attract more of the plaque. Oh. And uh, since it's not a dental, pro you didn't visit a dentist to have all of it removed, it means it will form very fast. Okay. So once you form that hard tartar, it will start pushing away your gum because your gum is designed to, uh, let's say what, relate with your tooth in a very clean environment. So once you introduce something abnormal like that, bacteria, tata, the gum will move away. They are not good friends. So when it moves away, again, you give room for more tata with poor brushing again. The cycle continues now. So the more the plaque forming, the more the gum moves. All this time, no symptoms until it reaches a point when the disease is halfway. That's when, uh, what I've described is called gingivitis. Maybe some mm. people have heard about gingivitis. Yes. You get some mild swelling of the gum. Yes. You cannot see it. You cannot even notice it, but it is there. And actually, to surprise you, everyone has uh, some degree of gingivitis, okay. including okay. we dentists. Mm. Why? Because we still have some plaque and some, some, some plaque deposits on our teeth. But then most people will progress to what we call periodontitis. When the gum now starts getting swollen, it's yeah. it starts moving away from the tartar, mm -hmm. then your immune system will try defending your gum because these are new foreigners on the tooth. And the gum is here and it's wondering, who are these? What do we do? Mm -hmm. So the gum starts swelling. The gum starts uh, getting a lot of blood supply to try and fight off yeah. this invading So uh, that, that tata. appears as a swelling. No, you yeah, you get some swollen gums. And that is when I said most people will start realizing. Mm -hmm. What are the signs and symptoms? You start bleeding when you brush. The first sign, you start maybe, ah, yesterday I brushed and I saw some blood. Let's, let's just take a break right there. When we come back, we're just going to continue talking about the gum disease. And so one the, the very first telltale sign that you probably will see is when you start having your gum bleeding while you're brushing. We'll pick up from there after this very short break. Please send in your questions. It's all about your oral health this morning with Dr. Peter Irongo, triple one, triple four, triple one. That is our SMS line. We'll be right back after this break. Welcome back. Welcome back to Full Circle with Mwikali. A very good morning to you. Triple one, triple four, triple one. That is the number that you need to be sending in your questions. We're talking about oral health. How's your dental looking like? Are you smiling as much as you should? Are you wishing that you could do better? Are you experiencing something that you don't know what it is? Please send us those questions because we have dental surgeon Dr. Peter Irungo in the building just answering all of those questions for you. Just before the break, we were deeply in the conversation around gum disease. Yes. And we'd seen the plaque and it forming a heart layer and how the gum, uh, the body's fighting and then the, there's a swelling that comes up around the gum yes. trying to protect you, but then maybe it's too late. Now yes. you're bleeding yes. while you're uh, brushing your teeth. Yes. And that's a telltale sign. The first sign. Okay. The bleeding will be intermittent. Okay. So sometimes it's it sometimes you don't okay. all this time you should have been to the dentist like yesterday mm. but most people don't know yeah so they'll always maybe unfortunately rush to the stores and try because to get somebody might think <coughs> oh pengine ni to the brush yangu ni yes too. yeah or others will be like let me go I'll buy a few concussions here mm. and there let me change my toothpaste let me change what yeah let's stop that Okay. let's rush to the dentist as fast as possible okay and i'm saying that because i talked about a silent killer so people yes. will understand where we are going because we are talking about around 30 years of age now so you're working you're busy unfortunately in life at that stage you are too busy again so you'll ignore those small telltale signs of bleeding and brushing and it's starting on and off and then after another like five years 
the tartar has formed too much, the gum now is swollen and receded. Receded means it's moving completely away from the tooth. And then you start noticing your tooth is becoming a little bit longer than it was before. Mm. The bleeding now becomes more intense, like uh, it's happening even without brushing. Some people yeah. get to a point where they can't even bite on something because that disturbance of biting, once you touch your gum, it bleeds. That is what we call spontaneous bleeding. Now you are headed to the extreme level of gum disease, of periodontitis. And that is always the sequel. That is how it progresses. So at that point, you still don't have pain. And that's why it's still silent. So most people will still ignore and buy all concussions to try and stop bleeding. Uh, after that, you start getting some bad breath, some foul breath. It's called halitosis. Why? Because your gum has swollen enough, but there's still a lot of calculus hidden under that gum. So the cells fighting this calculus now, they're coming in large numbers. So most of them are dying off inside that pocket. We call it a pocket. Yeah. So anywhere where your tissues or in, uh, your body where some tissues die off, they form what we call pus. Mm -hmm. And that pus is in your gum. And that is why you have some bad breath. Mm -hmm. So you notice mm -hmm. you never had bad breath, but all of a sudden you're starting yeah. to pick some bad breath. Yes. And uh, most people will still ignore. They'll still think maybe they're thinking wrongly about themselves. Oh. Any other person who will pick it may not be able to tell you. Yes. Because uh, bad breath is not something simple to tell someone. So you end up going through that phase again with, uh, without any knowledge of what's going on. By this time, your tooth is detaching from the gum. And the next thing you'll see after the bleeding, after the bad breath, after the spontaneous bleeding, it reaches to a point where whereby people wake up and find that uh, the pillowcase is soiled with some blood and they're wondering where did it come off? Just around the, the face area. Because when the bleeding is happening at night, your mouth ends up, your mouth ends up drooling some of that saliva. Because even your body can pick that you're not doing good. So while initially you've never drooled, some drooling starts occurring at the corners of your mouth. And then you find some blood spot and you're wondering what's happening. All this time, you should have been to the dentist like yesterday. Because the disease is still continuing. Yeah. After that, the tooth starts becoming loose. So you realize, oops, my, to my tooth cannot bite something hard. My tooth is not feeling comfortable when I'm biting some bread, some hard bread. And then it progresses. You reach a point now you can't even bite something soft. Because the gum, as we've said, has left your tooth. Their tooth is on your own. And then they start drifting now. Some teeth become longer. Unfortunately, by this time, you're around 50, 60 years of age. And that is when tooth loss begins. That is where the silent killer starts hitting you. And mm -hmm. most people still won't know because they'll think, I'm getting old. Yeah. Mm, that's our parents, our grandparents. When they started losing their teeth, everyone thinks it's, it's because old of age. age. Never. You're not supposed to lose any tooth because of age. You're supposed to survive with all your 32 teeth until the last day. If you take good care of them, if you visit a dentist always, up to the last day you'll have 32 strong teeth. You can still be chewing sugar cane up to 100 plus years. Okay. So we fail to get that age with our teeth because we because fail to take care of them. Yes. We fail to take care of them because we didn't brush well or we brushed well but we never visited a dentist. That's where we come in. Most people wonder why do dentists dentist insist that we see them every year? Why? Because those silent killers will always eat up your yes. gum without you knowing. The same with cavities. Cavities will form from phase one without pain, without anything. By the time you're feeling pain or sensitivity, you're in phase yeah. three. And by that time, most people also won't do anything. They rush and buy medication. Aye, it's yes. removing <laughs> it. Just remove it. it <laughs> remove that is it. And, and then now we, sh we shouldn't it. have got into that place yes. in the first place. Yes. We have a couple of questions here for you, Dr. Uh, okay. Uh, hi, Mukali. My five-year-old has a tooth cavity. Yes. Five-year-old. Yes. I bought uh, that specific toothpaste yes. for his age. Yes. Lakini bado anakompleinu chungu ni tamsaidiaje. Wow. Uh, no treatment has been done. Agenda kwa Dr. Yes. Okay. So a toothpaste will never correct a problem. Actually, a toothpaste is meant to freshen up your mouth and provide the little fluoride that we said that can repair a cavity when it is starting, not when it has formed. Yes. When it is starting, before you even know, even as dentists, before we can look at your mouth and see, think there is a cavity, mm. maybe your toothpaste will go and repair it. So it's not something you can see. But wait a minute. If you can even see the cavity, 
That yeah. one formed years ago. Years it didn't ago. even form yesterday. So the solution for any damage is to visit a dentist. You repair that tooth. Most people will ask, what do we do with our teeth? What do we do with the children's teeth when they yes. get cavities? We've said no to extraction. So what we do, we repair. And there are many methods of repairing such damage. You can do fillings. We can do what we call palpotomies in children. We can do what we call palpectomies. In adults, we can do what we call root canal treatment. All these are geared towards repairing the damaged part of the tooth. Okay. And it doesn't matter how bad it's damaged. If you visit a professional, you'll be shocked that you may have lost a tooth that was not even as damaged as what a professional mm. will even save. So we don't, we don't, we've said first we don't extract. We don't extract, yes. So let the doctor fight like us at our dental clinic. We can only lose a tooth if you've lost it yourself. Okay. But us will fight with it until the last day. Okay. Including children. Let's right. remind them. Let, let okay. people not rush to, to dentists and say, no, these are milk tooth. These are baby mm. tooth. Just get it off. No. Mm. We always advocate a milk tooth to stay in the mouth until the time it comes off naturally. Naturally. Yes. Okay. Not premature loss. Okay. Because of reasons that we'll explain maybe <laughs> during another time. <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, morning, Mikali. On the issue of brush brushing three times a day, mm -hmm. which Dr. Tari has said it is hard. Yes. Can gum, chewing gum, help to regulate this bacteria? Uh, brushing twice a day, first of all, will be sufficient enough because mm -hmm. you're busy in during the day mm -hmm. and brushing well. So it's not just brushing. Yes. Chewing gum comes in, we advocate for them sometimes because uh, we talked about bacteria, we talked about saliva, we talked about them sticking on the tooth. Mm -hmm. So chewing gum is safe because it's a, it's a sticky thing that you chew. So mm -hmm. the stickiness of it as you turn it around in your mouth uh, we always find that it has some positive benefit. It will detach most of the plaque as you chew. And the good thing with it is that it has no sugar. Most of the time within a few seconds, there is no sugar in that gum. Yes. So that is the safety about it. Secondly, it will always trigger more salivation. It triggers your body to produce more saliva. And the more the saliva that is running around your mouth, the more you swallow, the more you reduce this number of bacteria. Because most oh. of them will be swallowed with the saliva. We say they are normal flora, so it's yes. not anything that, that is disgusting, no. So the more you chew, the more you trigger more salivation. Great. The more saliva flows around your teeth, the more it can help minimize. But it is not a solution to reducing the number of bacteria. As long as you don't visit a dentist, even if you are brushing well, you will still get the disease. Okay. Why? Because we said you will never eliminate 100%. But when you visit a dentist for regular cleaning, we'll make sure we remove all the hard deposits, the tartar and the rest. Okay. We leave you to fight with the soft ones, mm. plaque. And before they form any damage, maybe it's over six months, you are back to us again. Okay. So you see, we'll always be fighting with them and they will always be winning. Great. Yeah. Um, we have an SMS here saying, great topic, I'm 63 years old, and last year my dentist said I had receding gum. Yes. And indeed, I have some <coughs> slight pain now. How can I be assisted? Mama Jason from Mombasa. Wow, wow. okay. We've At said 63, receding yes. gum. Yes. Receding gums at that age is expected. It's allowed. Because also, we are fighting against aging, and part of the aging is the gum fighting uh, to survive. You've been chewing with your teeth for 60 years, let's mm. say. Mm. So some mild degree of recession is allowed. But again, has it been controlled over the 60 years? Yeah. If it has not been controlled, then it's a bit worrying. So that's why we are insisting you start visiting a dentist from a very young age, from five years. Mm -hmm. So that all along the 15 years, 20 years, 30 years of age, 40 years, your gum has been in top shape. Can she be assisted now at this age? Yes, that is what I was coming to because okay. it depends on whether the disease has been progressing up to now that now mm. we have to fight a disease that has been there for years. Okay. And that's where we need to see. We, as we've said, we, the last option is to lose any tooth. That's it true. doesn't matter what age. Yes. So there's a way we fight with them. Uh, at, our, at our facility, we try to even do splinting for most of the teeth what if they are it? loose. If they are loose, you try to hold them together with each other ah. so that you minimize whoever is loose can get support from the next one Okay. okay. so that you avoid okay. losing that tooth. Okay. If there's some pain, we need to understand, is it coming from the root being exposed? Or is it coming from a cavity that may be not visible? 
So professional dental review there is required and we can welcome her. We always see patients even from Mombasa. They'll travel Mama all the Jason. way. Yes. I'm a Karibishwa. Yeah, Karibishwa. Shine Sana. Dental Clinic. Shine Dental Clinic. Okay. They can look for our page and get the directions. Great. And we'll be humble to find the solution to her problem. The recession may not mean loss of a tooth. Yes. What matters is the degree of recession. If it's 90%, then the tooth may be lost. But we can still fight for that 10% and buy a few more years with that tooth. Absolutely. Yes. Hamwikali, on dental matters, if the wisdom tooth erupts mm -hmm. and starts growing, but leaves space between it and the previous tooth, tooth yes. should it be removed? My name is Ivy. Mm, okay. We treat, uh, we treat dental problems according to the need. Mm -hmm. So a wisdom tooth erupting and leaving a space between the other tooth is not a problem. Mm -hmm. You will only tell me it's a problem when you come complaining of pain, mm -hmm. when you come complaining of food getting there all the time, when you come complaining of a swelling around that tooth. That is what we can treat. But the tooth itself just getting stuck in between there does not merit or does not warrant mm -hmm. any, any, any treatment because it's not a problem. And that's allowed. Some of those teeth, we observe them actually. I'm one of the proponents who always discourage most of those people. Some places they go, they are told, any wisdom tooth that is not straight, it's not erupted well, get it out. Mm -hmm. But I always say, no, just leave that tooth there. It's not causing a problem. Let's watch it. So I think that is where she was getting to. Maybe she's been told somewhere, get this tooth out. But I always say, let it lie there as long as it's dormant. It's not okay. causing pain. There is no gun disease. There is no food getting in there. But the, that is the advantage of visiting a dentist. Why? Because we'll keep seeing any progress around that tooth. Yeah. And it's good to stick with one good dentist so that they're able to remember. They're able to record mm. and see last time it was like this. Mm. This time I'm seeing something. Yes. This time I'm seeing something happening. So let's do this. But then uh, if you also change too much, no one will know what was there. So you might also be running around with your problem worsening while you're not getting a solution. Okay. Yeah. Uh, hi, Mikali. After my milk teeth were removed, mm -hmm. one of my front permanent teeth grew back with a layer on it mm -hmm. that was a different color than the rest of it. Yes. What exactly is that and how can I remedy it? One tooth only. Yes. Wow. One of my front permanent mm -hmm. tooth mm -hmm. grew back with a layer on it yes. that was a different color from the rest. Wow. What's going on? What is it? And how can we remedy it? I think on that, we'll talk about the general changes of color. Because for one tooth, we may not be sure. Maybe the milk tooth that was there may have been damaged. So you find that the tooth that was erupting underneath that tooth uh, encountered some infected tissues. We normally see that when you let your, baby, uh, your baby's teeth get so much decayed, you are assuming that they'll come off. Your baby is just crying, maybe sometimes of pain. Uh, just know that the permanent tooth may be getting affected also. Mm -hmm. Because if it comes through, it finds an infected area. Yeah. The chemistry around it will change. So it's not the normal sterile area. So it encounters new bacteria that it has never encountered. Why? Because it's coming from a very clean area, trying to transverse the gum and come out. So mm -hmm. we normally get a stained tooth. We, we call it Turner syndrome. Tana. Tana, yeah. T-U-R-N-E-R. Tana syndrome, yeah, or a Tana's tooth. Okay. So you might notice one part of the tooth that has erupted has a brown or black spot, and it's normally well marked. The rest of the area, the rest of the tooth will be white, yes. but at the tip, we have that color. Mostly, we'll see it with the premolars, mm. because babies have what we call deciduous molars. Okay. They don't have premolars. But once the baby's deciduous molar comes out, it's yes. replaced by premolars. Those who are good in biology will I remember. remember. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't say that because it's too much. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Was, was, okay. Yes, that's okay. too much to okay. burden young people in school. Okay. So a baby has no premolar. Okay. A baby just has the front teeth and some molars. Okay. okay. But when you become an adult, you get a pair, uh, three, three molars mm -hmm. and two premolars. Yes. And then you have the front teeth. Ah. So every side has the incisors and then the canine, two premolars, three molars on each side. Dr. Irungo, we have so <laughs> many questions for you here, but our time is up. Ah, okay. It was up a couple of minutes ago. Yeah. But I am so grateful that you came in through today and you helped us with this. We'll probably have you back to you know directly just answer Anytime. the questions that mm. have come in we have so many of them triple one triple four triple one just keep sending them we'll find a way 
to have Dr. Irongo come back, isn't it? Anytime. Okay. And they can Great. also reach us on mm -hmm. Shine Dental Clinic mm -hmm. uh, on our media platforms yeah. or our mobile number. Office yes. line is 0710. 860006 that is 0710 mm -hmm. and they can also ask the question the questions they are burning questions there are some people in pain mm. they are wondering where do we get you okay. get us on 0710 all right great and we're going to take a very short commercial break right now we will be right back not going too far